Hey people, welcome to the part 3. In this part, how to control the mind from erotic chaos is explained. Watch till the end, let's begin. It is not understood that after one time intercourse, the sense is satisfied for longer duration and it experiences a little excitation in the day and night for a little time. Still people dwell in sexual thoughts for the whole day, all night long. What do we call certain people who fill their bellies with enough food and still um, think of food? Think of food? They'll end up eating more and thus making themselves sick. Likewise, we should stay away from uh, the discussed eight types of masturbations to avoid fornication, which means establishing physical relationship. Unnecessarily, one must never break his or her physical celibacy. Control yourself as much as possible. But one must ensure to never ever break the mental celibacy. The mental celibacy is the must, must thing, never break it. Celibacy refers to the Hindi term brahmacharya. For this, it is very necessary how you see things that means vision correction. If you perceive other females as your mother, sister or daughter, then you'll be easily able to control your mind. Physical celibacy can be maintained by staying away from ladies, but if done stubbornly, it will be harmful. In secluded place, fire of mental thoughts might ablaze even more. So the only thing which can stop it is vision correction. So start seeing women through from the eyes as you see women in your home. If you do if you see the body parts of other women in your head, then Compare it with your mother or sister's body parts. This way, you can stop the mind's misconduct. Don't sit with young girls alone, whether she is your relative or, not, or anyone. Don't talk in a whispering voice. Whatever you want to say, just say it clear and loud. Keep your eyes down or elsewhere. In Indian epic Maramayan, Lakshman lived with his elder brother's beautiful wife Sita for 14 years alone in the jungle. He lived with complete celibacy. He never encountered any bad thoughts because he never looked above her feet. When Ravan kidnapped Sita, then both the brothers found her ornaments on the path. Lakshman couldn't recognize the jewelry of ears and neck. He only recognized the toe rings and said, I used to look only at her feet during touching feet and taking her blessing. One who purifies his vision towards females can be safe from fornication and also can achieve unabated youthfulness. Sometimes the sexual desires are so high and intense that it takes a person towards rape. In that specific time, that sexual power must be transmuted into intellectual power. Whenever one encounters this intense feeling, stand up and start walking. Start chanting Gayatri Mant in your mind and visualize yourself standing in front of your deity or god or any angel you believe in or worship and then ask the deity about the subject of hidden spirituality. There was a young boy who practiced celibacy and told his experience about encountering his desires. He told whenever he experiences the strong urges, he used to remember his body as mortal. He thinks that he is lying dead and it's not worth seeing touching. It's terrible. He tells that once he saw a dead person's body, the scene was offensive. There was maggots in his corpse, eating him away, the intense bad odor. And when he thinks of himself in such a condition, the sexual urges stop immediately. There is one more boy who lies down whenever he feels such desires. He relieves the muscle tension in his body by just lying down, relaxes himself, and then he thinks the sexual power is getting converted into the intellectual power and reaching his brain from his reproductive organ. And by doing this, he feels immense relaxation. Ethology says, hey people, following celibacy is the true life, health, happiness, and beauty. And on the other hand, destroying one's sperms, the actual life force is like lying down into the deathbed. Whenever you feel necessary, you can choose it. I mean, whatever you feel necessary, you can choose it. You're totally free to choose. God has given you the free will. Either choose goodness and touch the sky, or you can degrade yourself. It's up to you. And thanks for listening to my Supreme Guru's advice. Thank you so much.